Hello friends, welcome to Garnet Creekside. I am Jenny and welcome to the wacky world of North Carolina. <laughs> so it is the middle of November, it's November the 11th and we have a big, it's been really rainy today. We've already gotten three inches of rain. It's like it's gonna be 79 degrees today, currently at 85% humidity. The sun is currently shining and it's raining. It's just one of those things. So we're just going to do this video a little nursery update and it may start pouring down rain. Who knows? But we're just going to go with the flow. Also, some of y'all have said, Jenny, how in the world do y'all do all the stuff you do? Well, we, we work, 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 and then we kind of crash. So today, because it's going to be a rainy day, was going to be the day I crashed. So I am embracing the staying at home, not doing anything um, day to day. Well, I mean, we're working, of course, but you know, not outside gardening. I once heard a a little saying that said something about that God gives gardeners rainy days so that they can get housework done. <laughs> well, I'm trying. The whole point of what we're going to do today is a little bit of a fall chores that we are doing here at the nursery. So things that we're doing around the nursery now that it's fall, it looks like fall, but it doesn't feel like fall. It feels like we're in like the tropics right now to prepare, wrap up the season to go into winter. We're standing here in front of the field. We've been here many times before. You'll see behind me um, where the poor sunflowers, you know, got laid down by Zeta. Jerry went ahead and chopped them up, tilled them up, and went ahead and did the whole field. So you'll notice it's a little rough. You can see some dirt pulled up and sorts of things. He did that last Friday, Saturday, and then went ahead and put grass seed out. This is great that we're getting this rain because the grass seed hopefully will go ahead and germinate and we'll have a beautiful field of luscious green grass. So that is one thing that we are doing is we're going ahead and planting, reseeding um, grass seed so that we have really pretty areas for you to look at when you're coming back. Remember the video we just put out earlier about planting trees. We did a whole privacy screen behind me. So if we come this way, of course, you can see the house, right? There's the house. The big tall tree, you have the three crepe myrtles, then the big tall tree in the yard is a redwood. And then beyond that, I, I think you can see probably, those are the, that's the new line of the privacy screen. So that's where the Berkeys are and those Thuja green giants back there. We are already loving them. We see them on the back side of the house. They're gorgeous. I cannot wait to watch these things grow because they're gonna be fabulous. So we're doing grass. We're planting big trees and shrubs, all sorts of things. Now we do have on, um, I'll let Jerry come show you this though. The creek, we'll have people come and they're like, well, you're called Creekside. Where's the creek? And we're like, yeah, you drove over it. Normally this is a very sleepy little creek, but when we do get big rains, and hopefully that is not a customer coming right now. Probably so. We're closed. Blessed. Um, oh, lousy. I don't know where these people are going. I don't know. I don't know. Y'all, seriously, life at Creekside. I just don't know. <laughs> Jerry's trying to stop them. I just don't know. We're, we're going to keep on going. Okay, no, we're not because there's more people. For a second. <laughs> Are they coming? Blessed, y'all. We love you dearly. We really do. Um, the nursery is at our house. We have a gate, but sometimes we have to leave the gate open because we do live life and we have deliveries coming. You know, we can't just completely close off our life. So when the nursery is closed, the nursery is closed. If you're gonna come see us, if you will please check Facebook, Google, Google Maps, it'll say. If you go for directions, it'll say. The nursery is gonna be closed when you get there. Guess what? Those are correct hours. Yes, we have limited hours. You just never know who's gonna come. But anyway, I'm telling you, it is always something. So yes, we have lots of water standing. Um, we're going to walk over here because I want to show you another thing that is really important for you to go ahead and do. Yes, today is like 76, 79 degrees in North Carolina, but 
like 10 days ago, we had really our first hard frost. I think it froze because I lost all my coleus got zapped. All those things got zapped, but oh my goodness, yes, it's a good thing we're wearing our boots. But you will notice where we are here at the nursery. These two beds are those trial beds for the proven winter annuals. You will notice that essentially everything is gone because with that frost freeze, it zapped a lot of those annuals. Um, with the, we had two, remember, elephant ears and they were, I mean, massive. This was the heart of the jungle, huge one. It got zapped. We went ahead and just cut it back. We didn't dig it up in case we have a mild winter and it comes back. So it's gonna be a little experiment. We'll see how that does. Also the coffee cups on the other end, we just cut it back down to the ground. We'll see what happens with that. The lantana is a little burnt, but right now she's still holding strong. And then so is the Mexican petunias. So we will see how they do. They're eventually gonna get zapped. But the whole point is, if you've already had your frost freeze and your annuals have been zapped, you need to go ahead and get them out of the ground because by leaving them in the ground, the whole foliage as it decomposes and it's laying there on the ground, that's a great place for um, bugs to harbor in over the winter. You wanna get those out. If you had any kind of insect issue with those plants, you don't want to give those plant those bugs a great place to hang out during the winter. You want to get them out. Plus, it just tidies up everything. I've always said a neat and tidy garden space is always much prettier than something that's really overgrown and just overdone. So if it's been zapped, go ahead and yank it out. It's very therapeutic to rip those things out of the ground, by the way. Um, and we might go ahead and do a layer of fresh mulch. That is another great thing to go ahead and do as we squish squash through the nursery, you're, you notice that your hydrangeas are probably going ahead and turning. They're not dying, remember, they're dormant. They're going dormant because they are deciduous. So if your hydrangeas and your um, various shrubs that are deciduous, if they start to look like this, you're okay, you're doing good. They're doing what they are supposed to do. We go through here. I didn't know if y'all have had this before, but Jerry, zoom in on this. So these are Atlas roses. If you'll notice these, these are what you call rose hips. So what happens is, is when you have an old bloom and the bloom goes away, see that little bulb area right here where it gets kind of fat? That's where the rose hip is starting to form. So that's a green one. And then that's a really mature red one. A lot of people will use rose hips, like there's rose hip tea. You can use them for a lot of medicinal uses. Um, plus they're just really pretty to look at, great fall foliage. Now, when you're putting out, you're cleaning up your annuals, you're getting your beds cleaned up for the winter, this is a great time before you put out pine needles and mulch, is to go ahead and put a layer of compost down in your bed. That way, it's amending the soil throughout the winter, and if you have perennials in there, perennials and shrubs, then this is food for the root system. We have plenty of land and sea compost, tons of it from Espoma. I think we have like nine more pallets coming tomorrow. Plenty of, of the land and sea. I know our beloved Laura uses this all the time. Very popular, so if you're looking for land and sea, Creekside Nursery in Dallas, North Carolina has it. We have folks driving from Atlanta, the eastern part of the state. I mean, all areas come at South Carolina, multiple hours away from us coming to get the land and sea. So if you're looking for it, come to us. Some of the mums, we do still have some mums, really most of them have kind of turned right now. It is the middle of November. So if you're looking for some mums for a special holiday, you can come. Jerry's looking at me. So we are standing right here with the Sunshine Ligustrum and you can probably really see that it is dropping leaves and it's looking kind of what I say naked. So or naked. What it's doing is it's like, I, I, we had chickens and so I kind of compare it to that. It's like the plant molts. It will go ahead, sometimes normally it can be like late winter, early spring. It'll drop its leaves and then it flushes back out with new growth. 
this is a great time when it does this is that you can prune it yes Jerry anything you want to add to that um, they don't like to be super super wet so if you if we have a lot of times of course I mean today's a perfect example we've had three inches of rain today if they have a really wet winter you'll notice that they really will drop their leaves really fast um, but again they flush back out with new leaves so don't freak out if your sunshine ligustrums start to um, molt as I say now let's mosey on over here to the pines because there are some fun things that we have been doing I say fun it's fun for me because we're cleaning up messes we're gonna come on over here and show you some things now this is just I like things neat and tidy right so this is a great time of year to come in in your beds whether they're full sun beds shade beds whatever wherever your gardens your vegetable garden whatever it is and it's time to clean up make things tidy that is what we've been doing the last couple of weekends especially since we had that frost and freeze so we have the hostas took a hit from those freezing temperatures we went ahead and cut them to the ground to the to the ground so whether they are in the ground like this one is just huge and it covers this whole area it got zapped we pulled it back jerry why don't you come around this way i want to show this pot this pot is right here at the bridge coming across and you're looking at it and you're like jimmy that looks really sad well it does because it has been performing all spring summer fall long and it's tired this is one fern this is a godzilla fern it's gotten zapped it's going to go completely dormant and i'm going to cut it back all the way down to the soil level there's a hosta in here i had some annuals in here they got zapped so when the winter comes this will be completely bare does that bother me no it doesn't bother me because these plants are resting they're sleeping through the winter their roots are growing bigger when they come back in the spring they will be even bigger and better next year it's okay to let your plants sleep there are seasons for a reason winter is a time of rest both for the plants and both for us now if you do have an area that is really driving you crazy and you're like oh i just need something in there this pot is a great example this container has an ostrich fern in here that has gotten zapped it's dormant i've cut it all the way back so if you have those perennial ferns you can go ahead and cut them all the way back and then i just went in and stuck some asparagus ferns in there gives me something green once we get into the hard hard cold temperatures of winter this might get burnt and get brown but asparagus ferns are really tough so i will go ahead and try to it should go through all the winter and then come spring i'll cut all the brown back and it will flush back out again so i did pop some asparagus ferns in there but over here you'll notice um, we just have tidied up things this whole trough was full of coleus it had the wicked hot coleus and it was just massive it was huge if you go back and look at some of the other nursery tours you'll see this what did i do i just took some evergreen ferns they're actually still in their containers and i just popped them in there so you think it's planted but it's really not but it still looks neat again with the hostas we went ahead the ones that have some of them have not gotten zapped some of them have gotten zapped the ones that got zapped we just went ahead and cut them back kind of to their crown they will be great same thing with the grasses we went ahead and cut these grasses back as a perennial grass we went ahead and just gave it a good haircut because it was getting a little wild and woolly and so we just gave it a haircut um let's see what else let's go over here because i do want to show you if you're a new gardener and you're like well jenny what does it mean how do i know if my hostas have been zapped well i'm going to show you what it means if your hostas have been zapped here we have drinking gourd this is drinking gourd hosta it's a nice it will get to be a really nice big hosta has cupped leaves it's kind of like the hosta version of coffee cups this has been zapped it is that great orangey brown color now you can leave it like this for a while because it does add sort of a fall interest to your garden or if you're one of those gardeners that likes to have it all nice and pristine and you know wrapped up in a nice pretty little bow you can go ahead and trim these back you're not going to hurt the hosta at all again 
Eventually, once we get a really hard, hard freeze, these will all turn brown and just lay flat on the ground. And then at that point, then you can just easily come in and take all of that dead foliage off. But you really do want to clean up your beds and get rid of all of your old foliage. Again, all of those pesky pests will make their nest in that kind of leaf litter in your beds. Snails, slugs, all sorts of things that you do not want in your garden. So a neat and tidy garden can be a very healthy garden, especially in the wintertime. And then of course, you know, now that we're under here underneath the pines, the constant job of picking up sticks and all of that wonderful stuff. But I hope that this has been somewhat informative, gives you a little glimpse into our daily life of the madness that will just suddenly erupt that you just have no control over. But again, a couple of tips on how you can, some fall chores that you can do around your garden, things that we're doing here currently at Creekside Nursery. The sun is back out again, but looking at the radar, we're gonna get slammed again in about an hour. So we are gonna head inside and do some office work. Got some fun and exciting things headed your way. We just finished yesterday a really exciting project. It's top secret. I can't let you know until, I'm not really sure when I can tell you until it's over. But anyway, top secret project we're super, super excited about. So stay tuned for details on that. As always, thank you so much for gardening with Creekside. We love you. We appreciate you. Y'all go have a fantastic rest of the week, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.